following is a presentation of TBS Sports. Home of the 1990 Goodwill Games. After last night's barrage of thunder, lightning, and rain, Atlanta found thunder and lightning in their bats. The Braves knocked out a season-high four solo homers en route to a 7-1 victory over the Reds. From Riverfront, today's rubber game, next on TBS Sports. Superstation TBS presents the Atlanta Braves, America's team. Atlanta Braves baseball is brought to you by Bush Beer. The beer with a taste as smooth as its name, Bush Beer. By the official airline of the Atlanta Braves, Delta. We love to fly, and it shows. And by Eckert Drugs, America's family drugstore. Good afternoon. It's time for Atlanta Braves baseball. Along with Skip Carey, Billy Sample, welcoming you to Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati for game three of this three-game set versus the Cincinnati Reds. The Braves' losers on Friday night, 5-4, to four, come from behind victory by the Reds, and aided by four home runs last night, the Braves won 7-1. to one. Today, they'll send Marty Clary to the hill, and he'll be opposed by Tim Leary, our first look at Leary in a Cincinnati Reds uniform. Well, Skip, the Braves have scored four runs in their last, four runs or more in their last four games. Offense that C.J. Jones really likes, and Russ Nixon also. Yeah, the Braves have struggled to score runs all year, and it takes a lot of pressure off your pitching staff. When you get some runs, the four solo homers last night, a team high for the year, and hopefully it'll carry over into today against Larry, a guy who's 6-1 and one lifetime against Atlanta. And we'll be back with the starting lineups right after this. Okay, Billy, thank you very much. Russ, uh, I know you haven't signed a, a renewal or extension of your contract, but we're all quite sure you will. You've done a good job with this ball club, and making that assumption and I know in, in your heart that's a big one what needs to be addressed what are the major problems of the Atlanta Braves well I think right now we have to do something about our offense Skip. I think especially uh, you know behind the plate uh, you can look at both corners too to be realistic about it uh, the rest of it doesn't seem to be too bad a shape but those areas I think we have to you know really confront and do some heavy thinking about it Jeff Blauser's had a good year Lonnie Smith has had an outstanding year when you consider everything when spring training ended Ron Gant, you figured for 20 or 25 home runs. Gerald Perry for 85 RBIs. Murph for 30 home runs. Jody Davis for 15 or 20. When you consider how things have gone for those four guys, maybe we're fortunate to be where we are. Well, I think we are. And it's very fortunate that Lonnie had the kind of year he's having for us because I, you know, I'd hate to think where we would be in a, in a situation we'd be in if it wasn't for what Lonnie has done for us. So, you know, we look at the other four areas that, we, that really kind of fell apart for us. And then uh, and to be where we are, you have to look and say, well, the young pitching has done it for us. And they have. It's, pitching has not been our problem. I uh, just wished we could have scored more runs where they would have had more wins. But, you know, that, that happens. And uh, unfortunately, it happened uh, at a bad time for our young pitchers. Joe Baber had a bad outing his last time out of the shoot, but he's been a pleasant surprise in your bullpen, and Jim Acker has pitched extremely well. Well, I think the bullpen, especially the Acker and the Baber duo, has done a great job for us. Uh, Joe, you know, he, he, of course, you're speaking of human beings. They're not going to be perfect every time out, but Joe, to me, has done a great job for us. And you're looking at a guy that's really been put in a situation for the first time. You're looking, to me, at a rookie. So uh, I have no fault of Joe Baber at all. Matter of fact, I'm very happy with Joe Baber. Russ, thanks for the visit. We'll be back right after this. The Reds have taken the field, and this is the lineup that Russ Nixon will send to face Cincinnati in game three of this series. Odeby McDowell leads off in center field. Jeff Treadway bats second at second. Lonnie Smith in left. Dale Murphy cleans up in right. Darrell Evans at first base. Andres Thomas back in the lineup. At shortstop, Jeff Blauser at third. John Russell with his third consecutive start behind the plate. And Marty Clary on the mound. 
for the Cincinnati Reds, 51 and 58. Mariano Duncan leads off at short. Luis Quinones bats second at third. Eric Davis in center field. Ken Griffey cleans up in left. Todd Benzinger at first. Herm Winningham gets a start in right field. Jeff Reed behind the plate. Ryan Oster at second. And Tim Leary on the mound. Randy Marsh comes home. He's from nearby Covington, Kentucky. He'll call the balls and strikes. Bill Hahn at first. Crew chief Harry Wendelstadt at second. And Gary Darling at third. Tim Leary has finished his warm-up tosses. And before Odeby McDowell steps to the plate to start game three, to bring you to play-by-play, -play, Skip Carey. Okay, Billy, thank you very much. Boy, it's hot down on that field. Odeby McDowell will lead it off. McDowell, Treadway, and Smith will be the first three for Atlanta. Odeby at 293, a homer, nine RBI. AAU team from Moline, Illinois, in Cincinnati, rooting for the Braves today. So are some Beta Theta Pies from Ole Miss and Alabama. Brad Gunner, Jeff Wills, Dan Sullivan, and Brad Robinson. The pitch. There's a drive deep right. If it's fair, it's gone. It is. Foul. Ought to be McDowell. Missed it by an eyelash. Odeby still can't believe it. No argument from Atlanta. He just missed a home run, and he really jacked that ball. Longtime Braves fan William R. Johnson in Muscle Shoals, Alabama, looking in today, rooting for the break. 0-1 the count. to bunt foul tipped it it's 0 and 2. There was nothing more that I like doing as you look at on deck batter Jeff Treadway than leading off the game first pitch hitting a homer because you know the pitcher is trying to establish a certain pattern a certain rhythm and you can really disrupt that rhythm by going deep on the first pitch. Oderby just missed now he's in the hole 0 and 2. And he taps it weakly to first. Benzinger steps on the bag one away. So McDowell is retired. Here's Jeff Treadway, the former Red, hitting 283. Five homers, one of them last night, 22 RBI. Braves head for Los Angeles after the game. We'll be with you Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday nights, all at 1035. Tomorrow, Tom Glavin against Ramon Martinez. Tim Leary, the former Dodger, met, fires ground ball to short. Should be easy. Duncan fields and throws. Two up. <laughs> Treadway is retired. Lonnie Smith about to stand it. Before he does, a happy birthday to my eight-year-old son, Josh. Miss you, buddy. Have a good day. Lonnie heads toward the batter's box. He's hitting 332, 16 homers, 51 RBIs. You're continuing a tradition. Your father used to have a word for you when he was broadcasting. Uh, he used to do it every night, though. Good night, Skip. I heard that all through high school. High school football opponents line up across from you, say good night, Skippy, and then knock you 15 yards down the field. Oh, and one the count. a good look at the Reds pitcher. Fastball, curveball, split finger. Downstairs. He's 6'3", 190 pounder out of Santa Monica, California. He came over with Duncan for Cal Daniels. On the 18th of July. The 1-1. One, one. Threw the fastball by him, 1-2. and two. Foul to the right, not a play. 
Well, Ernie Johnson leaves us after today's game, heads back to Atlanta. And Don Sutton will join us in Los Angeles. It'll be, we'll miss Ernie, but it'll be good to have some fresh money in the game. <laughs> A ball and two strikes. Got him. Hand him with a fastball. One, two, three. Nothing going in the first for Atlanta. We go to the bottom half. No score. We go to the bottom of the first. Duncan, Quinones, and Davis will be the first three against Marty Clary, who's three and one for the year, a 3.80 earned run ever. This will be his eighth start. He has one complete game, and it was here in Riverfront against Cincinnati. And he bombed him out in an hour and 48 minutes. Northwestern University. Duncan at 255, two homers, both in this series, 14 RBI. Threat of rain is very much in the air again today. But the cows have gone home. Fast strike is called to Duncan, 0 and 1. Is that where the expression, it'll rain till the cows come home? Could be. Fly right field. Dale Murphy is there. And one is out in the bottom of the first. Luis Quinones, the batter. He's hitting an even 200 with six homers, eight runs driven in. Roger Clemens failed to last the first inning. Today, he's got some arm misery. Yeah, he's pitching with a bad elbow. Clary looks in for the sign and delivers. Strike at the knees. It's 0 and 1 in the other baseball. Pirates lead the Cubs 3 2, bottom of the third in Pittsburgh. Andy Van Slyke has homered, so has Sean Dunstan. Check it, Andre Dawson, not Dunstan. The other action in the National League later on, including a big one at New York where Montreal is playing. Kevin Gross against Sid Fernandez. The 1 1 pitch. Outside, 2 and 1. Cleveland got three in the first at Boston. Clemens started lamp relieved in the first inning. Texas won nothing over Baltimore after an inning and a half. Kevin Brown pitching that game, the Georgia Tech youngster. Yankees 2 nothing over Toronto in the third. Jesse Barfield is at his 19th. Kansas City failed to score in the first at Minnesota, and all the other action is later on. Bob Nepper pitches for the Giants today against his former teammates at Houston. Ground ball foul, passed first. Full count now, three and two. Your on deck hitter is Eric Davis. Clary, a 27 year old right hander, looks in. High pop, short center. Andres Thomas out calling for it. Still back pedaling, two up. And here is Mr. Davis, 20 homers, 62 RBIs, a 277 average. The pitch. Low, one ball, no strikes. I know they showed a picture of those shoes yesterday that Eric Davis wears, those high top Nikes. Must be left over from his scholastic basketball days. Line foul up this way. Count evens at a ball and a strike. And his teammates were all on him about those shoes. And with some justification, I would say. Breaking ball, little squibber back to the mound, and Clary works there. Very easy first. One, two, three for both teams. And after an inning, we're scoreless. Dale Murphy leads off the Atlanta second. He had a homer here last night. His 13th of the year. He has 59 ribbies. Leary goes to work. Line one hop at the second base for Oster Fields. And a quick out. Murphy hit it hard, but out. 
Larry has just 43 walks in 137, making 138 innings now. And the Braves' first pitch hitting in this game. No use messing around with this guy. Darrell Evans, the batter. Darrell a homer, a single, and a sacrifice fly last night. Now with eight homers, 22 runs driven in. And the Reds with their infield shift. Actually, they had a little bit of a shift on Murphy. Oster close to the bag. As you see, Duncan to the right of the second base bag. A lot of room on the left side, but Darrell doesn't hit that way often. Fastball high, 1-0. down the right field line that's fair and into the corner the throw to second they'll hold him there good job in right field by Winningham Number 14. and Andres Thomas is the batter Winningham had him played in the corner and made a fine play. Normally he plays center field spelling Eric Davis but evidently he has worked on the off field as well. Thomas stands in runner at first one out the game's first base runner. Downstairs one ball no strikes. This is Larry's first appearance against the Braves as a member of the Reds. He compiled that six and one record. Primarily with the Dodgers. The 1 0 will not be made. He steps off the mound. Jeff Bowser waits on deck. High chop to short. Can they get two? There's one. There's two. Takes care of the top of the second one. Hit no runs, no ends, none left. We go to the bottom half in a scoreless game. We go to the bottom of the second. Ken Griffey will lead it up. Griffey, Benzinger, and Winningham, the first three. Griff having a fine year. He's hitting 287, seven homers, 24 RBI. He made their team as a non roster player this spring. Strike called at the knees outside corner 0 and 1. Nobody on nobody out bottom of the second. Out in front of a change and he's quickly in the hole 0 and 2. Griffey is one hit away from 1500 in the National League. He also has 563 American League hits. I believe he got his 2,000th hit as a member of the Braves. Yeah, he did. The 0-2, a little bit outside, a ball and two strikes. Todd Benzinger waits on deck. High, lazy fly ball, center field. McDonald is there. One out. Griffey flies to center. Here's Benzinger hitting 249. 11 homers, 50 runs driven in. You get the feeling that after the night game followed by a day game, you'll be seeing or saying lazy fly ball a lot. Some lazy looking swings. Benzinger stands in. Fastball away, one ball, no strikes. Added to the fact that it's the time of day where it's tough to pick up the ball. Two and zero, oh, the count. Benzinger has hit well against Atlanta. As pictured here, the pitch. High and outside. 311, three homers, nine RBIs against Atlanta. One for five against Clary. That one, a grand slam. 
There's a fast strike right through there. Three balls, one strike. High fly ball left field. Arnie Smith with the glasses down. Two up. Five in a row have been knocked off by Clary, Herm Winningham, the banner. Winningham at 234, two homers, seven runs driven in. The Natalie attired Ken Nolan, uh, associate director today. Get the great wheels up, Killer. One ball, no strengths. The 1-0 pitch. Line deep center. McDowell got a late jump, and that ball is going to be caught on the trip. He got a little tangled up as he broke for that ball, but he shook loose and hauled it in, and the inning is over. Winningham really smoked it. No hits, no runs, no errors. Another look, and no one left. The end of two. No score. Braves batting in the third of a scoreless game. This telecast is authorized on the broadcasting right granted by the Atlanta National, National League Baseball, Baseball Club, Club Incorporated. And any publication rebroadcast retransmission are the use of the pictures, descriptions, or the accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Atlanta National League Baseball Club is prohibited. We go to the third inning. Jeff Blauser will lead it off. Breaking ball inside. One ball, no strengths. Blauser had a couple of doubles last night. The pitch. It's even now, one and one. Nobody on or out in the third. <laughs> Chopped foul pass, third base coach Roy Matika, who really got a bum deal in the cow milking contest last night. The cow kicked over his pail. Two thirds of the way through, he claims he would have been the winner. After the game tonight, wrestling's greatest hits on TBS. We don't know who is featured today, but our staff will try to find out. That breaking ball eliminates Blauser. Second strike out for Leary. And at 7 o'clock tonight, the Superstation movie presentation, Day of the Evil Gun. Yet another Western with Glenn Ford, Arthur Kennedy, and Dean Jagger. John Russell is the batter. He's hitting 167 with three RBI. And he guides one up the middle for a base hit. At 11.30 tonight on TBS, hope we're in L.A. in time. The program is entitled History of Dieting. Killer and I will watch something together. Clary Bats with a runner at first, one out. History of Dieting? Just before you go to L.A. and Lasorda. Yeah. Tommy's probably featured in that show. Runner at first, one out. The Reds are thinking bunts, and that's what they're going to get. And it's a good one. 3 4 sacrifice, runner at second. So to be McDowell, who just missed a leadoff homer, is the batter with a runner in scoring position and two out. Billy Sample, Skip Carey with you from Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati. Reds are a game under at home. They're 28 and 29. The Braves have struggled on the road, 19 and 32. Oh, to be really spreads out in that batter's box. Russell at second, two out. 
Leary in his first trouble spot of the game, pitching very deliberately. A little bit inside with a breaking ball. One ball, no strikes. After the way Odeby hit that first pitch, Leary may be a little careful with Odeby in this situation with the base open. Leary might be a little leery. Pitches to McDowell. Let up is high. 2 0. It is really tough being your straight man because you're so much smarter than I. Oh, you're just saying that. Two balls, no strikes. I'm not it's I'm not smarter than anybody. Trust me. The 2 0 pitch. Inside three and it's nice to know that there are some universities that you can go to and get an education like the University of Missouri. I understand that you can. It never never took for me. Well, based on their football record of they just de-emphasized and didn't bother to tell anybody. The 3 0 pitch downstairs, he walked it. Two on, two out. Jeff Treadway, the batter. Treadway bounced to short his first time. Pretty good speed on the bases. Russell runs quite well for a catcher at second. McDowell has excellent speed at first. Leary comes set. And deals. Low and away, one and oh. He's having control troubles. And Treadway leads the Braves and hits against the Reds. He has 13 hits against his former teammates. Inside, two balls, no strikes. Reed calls time and goes to the mound to talk it over with Leary, who may be trying to pitch a little too fine here. Two and all the count. He's pitching like he doesn't think his club's going to score any runs. Well, hopefully he's right. Treadway in the driver's seat here as he awaits the 2-0 pitch. Russell leads at second. McDowell at first. Fly ball, twisting foul down the left side. Pretty well hit. Out of play. It's two and one. Two balls and a strike. I wonder whether or not the Dodgers and Reds made that trade. Leary for Daniels, the principals, just a little bit too late. Both clubs now more than double figures back of San Francisco. Fly ball, center field, well hit, but Davis will get there. In right center, and the inning is over. So the Braves threaten, but come up empty. One hit, no run. No errors, two left. We go to the bottom half of the third inning. Still no score. Baseball is brought to you by Budweiser. Beachwood Ace for that clean, crisp taste. For all that you do, this Bud's for you. We go to the bottom half of the third inning. Reed, Oster, and Leary will be the first three for the Reds, who have yet to get a base runner against Marty Clary. Clary has sort of been the dark horse of this pitching staff. Until this year, I don't think he was... And I'm not I'm knocking him, but I don't think he was really high in anybody's plans until he pitched his way onto the club with his fine outing at Richmond. And once he's gotten there, he's done nothing to convince you that he's anything but a major league pitcher. His earned run average is 3.80. He's 3-1. Three and one. At some point, the Braves were high on him. He was a 
first round pick actually the first choice by the Braves in 83. It was in the third round. Pitch to Reed fastball outside but then I think he sort of slipped he had a couple of very mediocre minor league years. He's a guy who really swears by the Nautilus program. He hit it heavily last offseason down in Greenville. Big change Reed out in front. And it added a little juice to his fastball. A ball and a strike is the count. And he got on the program to overcome some arm problems. Russell boxed it. The Braves have the only two hits of the game, but neither team has scored. We're in the bottom of the third. And when you consider that Leary is coming up in, a, in an organization that is promoting young pitchers, it's hard not to get psychologically down or mentally down. Three balls and a strike. Especially when you're 27 years old. Line right field, but Murphy is there. Back two steps, one out. Reed hit it hard, but out. Seven in a row set down by Cleric. And Ron Oster the back. Oster at 209, a homer and 10 RBI. Pitcher Tim Leary moves on deck. Another fine crowd on hand in Cincinnati. Fastball low and away, 1 0. Now, this is my example of a good baseball town. Team under 500, under 500 at home, and still drawing over a million and a half. Treadway fields and throws, two up. And here's the pitcher, Tim Leary. Leary hitting at 079. He's driven in two runs. That's an interesting step, isn't it? Just off the top of your head, that'd be probably the last team you would think hadn't won one because they were so successful in the 70s. Pop foul back into the upper deck. Nothing in one. And they have finished second the last four seasons. Low and away, and the count evens up. A ball and a strength. Two balls and a strike. The top of the order and Mariano Duncan would be next, but there are two out in the inning. Ground ball to third. Blouser fields, and the inning is over. Nine in a row knocked off by Marty Cleary. No hits, no runs, no errors, and nobody left. We've played three, and nobody's got anything. To the top of the fourth, Lonnie Smith will lead it off for Atlanta. And here with the play by play story, once again, Billy Sample. Okay, thank you, Skip. It'll be Lonnie, Dale Murphy, and Daryl Evans. Three, four, and five in the order to face 30 year old right hander Tim Leary. Leary, seven and nine on the season, looking for victory number eight, Marty Clary, three and one. You know what we have for Excuse me. In a long time, he has asked that age old question. If you're batting and you hit a ball into the outfield and a pig runs out and gobbles the ball up, how is that scored? And the answer, of course, is it's an inside the pork home run. Short night. You have to broadcast now, Billy. Lonnie, a strikeout victim his first time takes high and inside for ball one. Lonnie looking to extend a nine game hitting streak. Three for 11 in this series. The Reds have principally pitched him away as he grounds a one hopper to Oster near the bag. Crowd number one. You got to say something, man. Come on.
Dale Murphy granted the second his first time. Dale three for nine in the series. Two of those three hits have left the ballpark. Leary, formerly a All-American at UCLA, pitched there with present-day Baltimore Orioles starter Dave Schmidt. As we said earlier, fastball, curveball, split finger, picked up at split finger by pitching winter ball in Mexico. The 1-1 one -one to Murphy inside. Dale ahead of the count, two balls, one strike. On deck batter Daryl Evans. The outfield plays Murphy straight up and left fielder Griffey very deep. And Murphy will have a 3 1 pitch awaiting him. Pops a fastball behind the plate. Reed towards the stands and Jeff will have enough room crowd number two and with two out Daryl Evans the batter Daryl has had a good series four for eight a homer two runs scored Again, the Reds employ that shift, not so much in the outfield, but very extreme on the infield as he takes low and inside for ball one. Duncan's not far from what would normally be a second base position. He, the shortstop to the right of the second base bag, as Leary misses high and outside, 2 0 the count. Darrell with an open stance right on top of the plate. And he just tells you he's going to pull the ball. And we'll see whether or not he'll have a green light on a 3 0 count. But he does. Went up in the green seats last night. And the 3 0. Had the green light, but bounced at the Benzinger. Todd will take an unassisted. And the Braves go up and down in order for the first time since the first. After three and a half, we're still scoreless. Marty Clary has gone through the first nine Reds in order. He'll face the top of the order as the Reds bat in the fourth. Mariano Duncan, the leadoff batter, awaits the first pitch. Thought about bunting and took a fastball strike. Duncan has had a good series. Four for ten. Those two home runs in this series. And he tries for another one. Lonnie Smith back on the track. Lonnie should have room and just in front of the wall. Crowd number one. Ten in a row retired by Clary. And that one was probably hit the hardest. Billy inquiring minds want to know who the wrestlers will be after the game as you look at the replay of the out on the track. Mike Rotunda. And Sting will be involved in the grappling after the game. Not that Sting, wrestling Sting. You could read that on my face, mm -hmm. couldn't you? Quinones thinks about Bunning, as did Duncan before him. Takes a ball outside. Luis popped a short his first time. And takes a fastball on the inside corner. The count evens at one. Quinones at 198. Six homers, eight RBI. Out in front of a changeup. And Clary ahead of the count, one ball, two strikes. Just missed outside. Five of those six Quinones homers were solo shots, and you knew with only eight RBIs, a lot of them had to be solo homers. The 2-2. High and 
deep to center, but McDowell has it. That would be a little to his right. Gloves it for out number two. 11 in a row retired by Clary. And that'll bring up the most dangerous red, Eric Davis. Davis with a two run homer in this series in game one moves out of the way of an inside fastball. Two and oh the count. The Braves trying to make a run at fifth place currently seven and a half games back of Cincinnati and L.A. tied for fourth as Davis popped the 2 0 pitch. Behind the plate, Russell and Blauser converged, but the ball splits both of them. Russell's inexperience showed there. He lost that ball the second way it went up. I think he assumed it was out of play, and by the time he located, he just couldn't get to it. You see him after he made his break, but he froze at first, didn't have any idea where the ball was, and Blauser couldn't get there in time. And that's in a scoreless game, this is not the guy you want to give an extra swing to. And he remains ahead of the count. Two balls, one strike. Change. Catches the inside half. The count evens at two. On Quinones, he threw back-to-back -back changes. Missed with a second one. I wonder if he'd consider that again. We'll see. The 2-2 two -two looked like a fastball. Just missed at the knees outside. And the count runs full. Ken Griffey is on deck, but there are two out. And Davis awaits a payoff pitch. Fastball. Line to right. Murphy towards the line. Should have room. And as he disappears from our camera angle, Dale makes a catch for out number three. So for the fourth consecutive inning, the Reds go up and down in order. After four complete, we're scoreless. We're scoreless. Braves batting in the top of the fifth. It'll be Thomas, Blouser, and Russell, six, seven, and eight in the order to face Tim Leary. The Braves scoreless on two hits, and the Reds are scoreless. Have yet to have a base runner. Andres in a little bit of a slump, but he drills the first pitch deep to left center field, but it won't carry as Davis catches up to it. Close to the track, crowd number one. Elsewhere in baseball, in Pittsburgh after five and a half. Pirates and Cubs tied at three. Dawson, Smith, Van Slyke have homered. Philadelphia and St. Louis scoreless after two and a half. Montreal at New York has yet to start, as has San Diego at L.A. and Houston at San Francisco in the American League. Boston four to three over Cleveland after three. Texas two to one over Baltimore after three and a half. The first pitch to Blouser. Grounded wide of third. The Yankees two, Toronto one after five. Barfield hit his 19th. Kansas City and Minnesota tied at one after two and a half. Saberhagen and Raleigh on the mound. Detroit failed to score at Chicago in the top of the first. California, Milwaukee scoreless after one. Abbott on the mound for California. And Oakland at Seattle. A later start. The 0 1 to Blouser got jammed. Pushes it to right field. Oster cannot come up with it. And Blouser has the third brace hit of the afternoon. Just out of his reach. Maybe that'll be the start of something. Blouser continues his good series. Five hits and ten at bats in the series. And that brings up John Russell, who also has had a good series. John three for eight in the series. Included in that three walks. Blouser will steal a base from time to time. He has a good lead at first. Has only one stolen base in three attempts. But watching Jeff every day, you get the feeling he has better speed than that. As Leary misses outside. One and oh the count. Okay. 
Dan Blauser takes a good lead from first. Russell grounds one up the middle base hit. Blauser will stop at second. As the Braves have runners at first and second one out for pitcher Marty Clary. Now Clary takes a look at Roy Matika to see if he will be sacrificing in this situation. Marty had a successful 3-4 sacrifice his first time. That's Russell's fourth hit. Now Clary wants to make sure as he and Matika get together. Fourth hit in this series and you can't help but feel good about the way he is swinging the bat because John has just gone about his business hadn't said anything about the fact that he hasn't played a lot. And with the other two catchers hitting in the 100s as Russell is it would have been very easy to say look I should be playing. Clary shows bunt early and tried to bunt it down the third baseline and bunts it foul. They didn't put the play on that time. The shortstop broke towards second base. Third baseman Quinone is giving the infield signals. And he talks with Leary to make sure that Tim knows where he's supposed to go. As Skip alluded to, Leary was covering the third baseline. Quinone was close enough to the bag that he could have gotten back to receive a force as Clary shows bunt early. And Leary thinks about picking off Blauser at second. We're scoreless in the fifth. Braves trying to advance base runners. And once again, Cleary, Clary tries to bunt down the third baseline and bunts it foul now behind the count, two strikes. Marty has three hits and 14 at bats. So it is a situation in which Russ Nixon could switch up. Blauser at second, Russell at first, one out. The target for the 0 2 is outside, and Clary again was bunning. A lot of little games going on. Matika has flashed a sign to Clary. And Quinones has flashed a sign to the other infielders, including pitcher Tim Leary. As Leary misses outside, as Clary once again showed bunt. Two and two the count. This time, Clary gets the button down, but Leary Fields goes to third for one. Not in time to complete the double play at first. Because it was two strikes, Clary couldn't be as fine with that bunt as he would have liked to as Leary pounces off the mound. Good job by Jeff Reed too. He let him know right away that he had a play at third base. Catcher has got to help you to hold things out in front of him. So it takes a two out hit by McDowell if Atlanta is going to break through. And it'll be 0 for 1 with a walk. ODB has hit in five of his last six games. Takes outside for ball one. ODB with five hits and 21 at bats with eight RBI with men in scoring position. He has Russell at second. Clary at first, two out. And Leary being more deliberate with men in scoring position. For a 
a while the Braves couldn't help but get hits with men in scoring position. And sometimes that goes in cycles. As Leary misses high, 2 0 the count. Jeff Treadway on deck, but there are two out. Two on Russell and Clary. The outfield plays McDowell a step or two to pull. He has some room in left center field. And failed to hold this bad back on that split finger. Two and one the count. Gray's making a run at the fourth place clubs. Seven and a half games back of the Reds and the Reds who play well in September. Trying to make a run at the top. They play San Francisco and Houston in their next two series. They as the Braves go to the West Coast today. The Reds with a four game series against the Giants. As the Braves tackle the Dodgers as Odeby fouls that pitch off his ankle. And the count evens at two. After getting behind on fastballs, Leary has thrown him two consecutive split fingers. And the count evens. Russ Nixon and to his left pitching coach Bruce Del Canton and dugout coach Bobby Wine. Two on, two out. A 2 2 pitch. Gets away from Reed as the runners advance. Leary will be charged with a wild pitch. His seventh of the season. Leading the Reds pitchers and with a split finger from time to time you're going to have one that gets away from the catcher. So now a single means two. Earlier in the game, Leary was very careful with the base open. And we'll see what he has in store for McDowell on a 3-2 pitch. Missed inside. Bases full of Braves. Two out. And Jeff Treadway, who has 13 hits against his former teammates, the batter. That's Leary's second walk who came into the game with 43 walks and 136 plus innings. Treadway 0 for 2 today, 3 for 10 with a homer in the series. And on the first pitch, Browns win to Benzinger. And the Braves out of their half of the fifth. No runs, two hits, and they leave the bases loaded. At the midway point, we're scoreless. Pete Van Weren and Ernie Johnson with you now as we move to the bottom half of the fifth inning. Ken Griffey will lead it off to be followed by Todd Benzinger. Griffey, Benzinger, and Winningham, the first three against Marty Clary, who has been perfect through four. Turned out to be a delightful day, really not as warm as people expected. And some of the threatening clouds, most of them have disappeared. The Braves have had chances. They have had four hits. They left the bases loaded in the third. They left two on in the third. Three left on in the fifth and two in the third. Marty Clary. Pitched a beautiful game here last time in, beating him. And he's trying to do it again here this afternoon. 
Griffey with a 10 game hitting streak will lead it off. You have to be careful on Griffey. He can still pull that fastball. And he's done a good job filling in. Signed on to be a part time outfielder, and he's playing just about every day because of all the injuries. They've got a few players in that same category. Guys who were supposed to be backup players who are in that lineup a lot lately. Two balls and no strikes. And the 2 0 is low. Three balls and no strikes. Another crowd of this today is over 30,000. Last night almost 30. They've drawn about a million and a half. There's a strike. Riverfront Stadium. Three balls and one strike. The Braves will be in Los Angeles tomorrow night. Tom Glavin against Ramon Martinez. There's a drive. If it's fair, it's out of here. It is. Wow. He missed one just like Odeby missed one. Back in the first inning. That ball just foul going down the line. You mentioned a moment ago that he could still turn on a pitch on the inside part of the plate, and he just showed us that. That one fouled by a little more than McGowell's was, but not much. Three and two. And here it is. Driven right center field in for a base hit at least one. It'll be two. There goes a no hitter. And a line drive double to right center field by Ken Griffin. Griffey gets a standing ovation. His 1500th career hit in the National League. 1,500 in the National League, another 500 in the American. And he looks around, wonders what's going on. He's like, oh, that's nice. I don't know as though Ken was even aware of that. He has over 2,000 hits, and I guess he probably is out there wondering what's all the commotion about. He had to turn around and look up on the matrix board himself. He got a pitch down in the strike zone. It's his sixth double of the year. And it breaks up the no-hitter. Now uh, Benzinger. And the pitch is inside. Benzinger with three hits in this series is it safely in seven of his last eight games and he has been tough on Atlanta this year. A little pop foul out of play. Benzinger was with the Red Sox last year. Speaking of the Red Sox, their ace, Roger Clemens, knocked out early today. It might not have been the fact that he was hit that hard, but his arm has been bothering him. Not only the elbow, but the shoulder. And the old Sox, without Clemens, going to have a tough time winning that National League East, and they don't have first who they had last year. But there's one thing about the American League East. If you're at 500, you're a game and a half out of first, so you don't have to win as many games to win that division. It would appear. Winning him on deck. High pop, left side foul. That might make the seats, and it does. One thing about the races this year, it is great for baseball. There's a race in every division, and the Major League Baseball will set an all-time attendance record. First time in a while we've had that, too. Almost every year, the last half dozen years or so, there's been one runaway somewhere in the American or the National League. Oakland last year ran away with that division. Two balls, two strikes. He'll try to pull this ball to get a run at a third, but he's been off to the left. He hit that one, and he pulled it. Atop the Cincinnati dugout and a nice play by a fan who brought his glove. There's Winningham. 
getting a chance to play right field. Rooms not in there today. O'Neill is on the disabled list, their regular right fielder. 2 2 pitch. Foul tip. That ball lodged under the mask, it looked like, of Randy Marsh. He's smiling about it, but some people feel that umpires, like catchers, should have a flap on their mask. Look at that. It bounced up and got stuck right under his mask. I believe he's got a flap, too. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the flap. It went right under that. Two balls, two strikes. He got him on the team. That is strikeout number one today for Marty Cleary. Who pitched perfect ball through four. Gets his first strikeout on the chain. Was out of the strike zone, too. He got Benzinger to chase a terrible pitch down around his ankles. It looked like that old circle chain that several of the Braves pitchers used. Braves pitcher throw strikes. They lead the National League last time I looked in fewest walks. Here's Winningham. This guy's played with several ball clubs. Don't do that, Herm. Knock him in yourself. That's one of my pet peeves in baseball. Runner in scoring position. Yeah, guy in scoring position, second base. You try to bunt. I've always felt that that puts a heat on Jeff Reed, who's next. Although many managers probably tell you, well, if he gets a run to the third, the fly ball gets him in. And the 0 1. Kerr bouncing away, and Russell smothers it. Russell's done a good job catching. Got a couple of base hits today, too, right back to the middle. One ball, one strike. But there's no score. There's Grippy. He's at second. Clary pitching. Good change up. Another one. One and two. Foul tip, but Russell hung on to it. One ball, two strikes, one out. No score. This is a rubber game of this weekend series. And the pitch won't be made. A little fake back to second. Andres Thomas sneaking in behind Griffin. On that particular play, the pitcher looks. If he can see the shortstop when he comes over, if he can see his glove on the other side of that runner, he'll throw back there. There's a bounce to the third. Knocked down by Blauser. And that's going to be a boot. E5, ball should have been handled. Griffey held at second. Now Jeff Reed. Well, Blouser usually sure handed on those grounders. He's had a few throwing errors. Ball got to him in a hurry off the turf. He was playing a shallow third base. But he'll tell you he should have had it. Now they've got runners at first and second. For Jeff Reed, Oster on deck. There's a fastball in there. The Cubs and the Pirates at 3 3 in the seventh. The Phillies and the Cardinals scoreless in the fifth. And Montreal failed to score top half of the first in New York. They might have had a rain delay there or they just started late. The Mets are going for a sweep today. If they do, they're four back. The curve is at foul, back out of play. We'll keep you up to date on those other scores. All right, they had a 3.05 start today in New York for some reason, and that's why they're a little late getting on the board. If they get 
another win today. Mets four back. Players feel when you get under five, you are in it. Might have been old timers day at Shea. Yeah. Maybe that's why they started late. High with a fastball. One and two. Van Slyke hit a home run today for the Pirates. He hasn't had that great year. That's only his fifth home run after a year when he was voted by a lot of folks as the MVP. He didn't win the award, but he got a lot of votes. One out here, runners first and second. Clary in his longest inning. Still has a chance to get out of it. And the breaking ball is inside. Maybe Here's it was it. Farmer's Day up at Shea. What was that? Maybe it was Farmer's Day at Shea Stadium. <laughs> yeah. And they couldn't get the cows off the field. Yeah. That's what we had here last night. Farmer's Day. And Griffey moves off second. Winningham off first. 2-2. He struck him out. A foul tip. Nice job by John Russell. He hung on for the strikeout. Now Oster. After going four innings without a strikeout, Clary has picked up two now. That fastball moved away from the hitter. Oster, 0 for 1 with the ground out. They had... Oster, Lenny Harris, and Jeff Treadway at the start of the year. They traded away Harris. Everyone knows the story on Jeff Treadway, and here's Oster, who's been hurt this year, been on a disabled. He's a switch hitter. And he bounces it to Treadway, who touches a bag in time for the force. And that'll do it for the Reds in the bottom of the fifth. We go to the sixth, no score. We're going to the top of the sixth. Monty Smith will lead it off. He has struck out and grounded out. He has a nine-game hitting streak going. He'll be followed by Dale Murphy and Darrell Evans. Tim Larry with his final warm-up tosses. He was a high draft choice for the Mets years ago. The Heat getting a little bit to the Braves as Dave Persley, Jeff Porter, Hanley, players in the dugout. Those towels are soaked in a combination of ice water and ammonia. And it really is a refreshing way to cool off. We have to realize that down on that field with the AstroTurf and all that it's a lot hotter than it is up here. Here's Lonnie Smith. And they don't have killer spans down there either. And the pitch is a high drive center field. Davis is back to the warning track and he got it for out number one. Smith gave it a ride straight away center about 400 feet for the out. Once you see Eric Davis tap his thigh, he's got it. Tap your thigh. Thank you. Always uh, does that before he catches a fly ball. Now Murphy. 0 for 2 with the ground out and the foul out. The big guy has home runs in his last two games. He pops it up. Back this way. Going to be in the seats, I believe. Jeff Reed has one of those mitts that has got a fluorescent substance on it. That's an old Dodger trick, I believe. I think Al Campanis was the first to do that. Make the pitcher concentrate on the mitt. You can take a look at it as he puts it up. It's orange. Fluorescent, more or less. And the pitch is low. I guess you'd call it that. But uh, the Dodgers used to have all kinds of little gimmicks like that to make the pitcher concentrate on the catcher. And that mitt. It's very difficult for some young pitchers who play in ball games and pitch batting practice without a catcher. And they look at the hitter too much. And you're supposed to concentrate right on that catcher and the mitt and forget the hitter. And the pitch is outside. But it's not easy to break that bad habit. 
Wonder if he's using that glove on the request of Tim Leary, who pitched with the Dodgers. Probably. He might have brought it over with him. Three balls, one strike. Many times when you pitch batting practice in sandlot ball, and high school ball, and even in the major leagues once in a while, there is no catcher. And you kind of just pick up the pitch of the batter and you throw to a certain spot. You try to, but you can develop some awful bad habits. Three balls, two strikes. There's some pitchers that have said that when the batter comes up there, they take one look at him and that's it. And then they look at the catcher the rest of the time. And the mitt. That is down low and Murphy walk. That is walk number three by Leary. He walked McDowell twice. He's walked Murphy here with one out in the sixth. I remember Sacho Page when he came and he played just a little bit with the Atlanta Braves. And you talk to him about pitching, he said, I used to pitch those fastballs to the right-handed batters right off their belt buckle. And boy, they couldn't. He threw so hard when he was young, they could not do anything with it. There's a bouncer foul. Pitchers have their own way of doing it. What's good for some might not be good for another. No ball is one strike on Evan. But when you think about it, when you can throw a ball like Satchel did in his prime over 90 miles an hour, and you're a right-handed batter, and you get a ball right off your belt buckle time and time again, and you can't get the bat around, you're going to need a new supply of lumber. Break them all. No balls, one strike. That's high and away. Thomas is on deck. We are scoreless if you just tuned us in. In the top of the six. Bouncer first and it's fair. Murphy slides into second on a decoy. He'll now go to third and the throw won't get there in time. That'll be a base hit. And what happened down at shortstop, Duncan faked Murphy and made him slide. The ball had gotten by the first baseman, but Murphy was able to get up and get over to third, give Evans a single. That was a good try by Duncan. He almost was able to keep the runner down at second base, but Murphy recovered very quickly and immediately realized that the ball had gotten by. He quickly looked back that way when he saw the ball bouncing beyond Benzinger. He was able to get back to his feet and get over to third. Okay, the Braves with an excellent scoring opportunity now have runners first and third and only one down. Benzinger almost smothered that ball at first. It was just fair. He got a glove on it. Five hits now for the Bravos, and the pitches hit foul back against the press box. Look at Benzinger now. Heading toward the line, toward the bag, got a glove on it. But not quite able to hold on to it. And the ball almost hit first base umpire Bill Hahn after it got by Benzinger. No balls, one strike. Good save by Reed. Now there was a case of Benzinger, because of his hustle, it probably cost him. Many times a first baseman with a runner at first will be a little lazy getting off the bag and maybe just get off the bag a foot or so. He feels that ball. But Benzinger doing what you're supposed to do, bounced out three or four feet to field any grounders hit down that way, and he couldn't quite get to it. That's a strike. One and two. First and third. Fly ball of any depth. The Braves would get a lead here. They're looking for two. Swing a miss on that split finger, and Thomas is out of there. That ball went way outside. He does have a split finger fastball. Both strike two and strike three. Terrible pitches to be swinging at. Look where that pitch is. That was two feet outside. Well, let's see if Blauser can pick up Thomas. That's what they try to do. Help one another. 
Lauser had a soft single to right last time up. He struck out in the third. Evans first, Murphy third, two away. There's that split finger in the dirt. Reed really getting the work out. Murphy, third base. Evans, first base. Two away in the sixth. And the 1 0 to Jeff Blauser. Driven a short, but it's going to be a force play at second, and the inning's over. Evans is fourth. The Braves strand two more. That's seven they've left on base. We move to the bottom of the sixth. We are going to the bottom half of the sixth. There you see our score, and in Pittsburgh, it is three to three. The Cubs and the Pirates as they go to the eighth. Well, the Cubs tied for first in the National League East. Philadelphia and the Cardinals, no score in the sixth. Montreal and New York, no score bottom of the second as you take a look at the National League East. How about those Cubs? Holy cow. And the Cardinals hanging around, too. Don't count them out. And the West. If the Giants beat Houston today, it's going to be a two-game difference. In other words, they will be four games up. If Houston can bounce back and win, they cut it back to two. So it's one of those two-game swing jobs. Leary will lead it on. Incidentally, the Red Sox and Cleveland are now 4-4, bottom of the six. And Baltimore is losing 2-1 losing to Texas, bottom of the six. California, Milwaukee scoreless in the four. Marty Clary pitching a beauty here today. He has allowed one hit, a double by Ken Griffey, and we're in the bottom of the six. He hasn't walked anybody on the outside corner. Duncan's on deck. Leary grounded out the first time up. Hit high into the air. Right field. Murphy over, but it's out of play. Pete, Leary's not a bad hitter for a pitcher. No, he's very good hitter. He was the top hitter among National League starting pitchers last year, but he's not hit the ball that well this year. This year he's only three for 39, batting average of 077. Now the one two pitch. Hit toward first, and it's foul. Evans go through with it. Well, I got a message for all you Red Sox, Boston Red Sox, and New York Yankee fans. The book you gotta read is Summer of 49. Pick that one up. Especially you Red Sox and Yankee fans, or baseball fans. Pitches inside. It's well done. I believe it's on the best sellers list. Two balls, two strikes. And the pitch. Outside, Clary's a little upset with himself. He's run it full now on Tim Leary. And he walked it. Not a good start here in the bottom of the six. He walked the pitcher. That's the first walk by Marty Clary. Now Duncan. Quinones is on deck. Duncan has had a good series with four hits. A couple of them homers. One to win a game. He is butting, and it is out toward the pitcher. Out at first. Russell fell down, and it looked like it might botch it, but Cleary went through with it. And now Evans is wondering whether the batter interfered with Russell. Evans is questioning it. Now here comes Russ Nixon out. You got to bunt it and get out of the way, but I don't believe uh, Randy Marsh is going to rule any differently than he did. It'll be a sacrifice. One four. Let's look. Take another look. Now see where Duncan goes after he gets the bunt down. He runs in front of Russell. 
which is all right. Well, there's where Russell lost his footing. It looked like uh, Duncan's right foot might have tripped him up a little bit. But no interference is ruled. Here's another look at it. Or did he trip over the bat? Might have been the bat. Yeah. I've noticed when Duncan swings, sometimes he flips the bat out in front of the plate. Quinones with the go-ahead run at second base and one down. Sacrifice. Good play by Clary. That is a fastball over on one. Eric Davis on deck. Leary at second, and there's a swing and a miss on a good changeup. All and two. Those pitchers don't run that well, so it'll take a long single to get Leary in. No balls, two strikes. Boy, he just missed. One and two. The outfield playing Quinones just a little bit pull. He might get that change again. And the one two pitch. It's hit foul. Back out of play. Cubs and the Pirates, 3-3, bottom of the eighth at Pittsburgh. In the sixth now, the Phillies and the Cardinals, no runs on the board. Here, no score. A bouncer to second. Treadway's got it. And that's two down with Leary over to third. And their big gun coming up. Eric Davis with an eight game hitting streak. They're reading RBI guy. He has 62 RBIs now. Paul O'Neill also is 62, but he's disabled. Everybody backs up a little bit. Marty Clary with his first pitch is inside. Grippy's on deck. Spots like this build character in a pitcher. One ball, no strike. That is a strike on the outside corner. One ball, one strike. Russell with the sign, Marty Cleary from the stretch. Here it comes. Inside again, two and one. He's been in and out on him. He's gonna pitch carefully. He's got two bases open. Russell with the sign and a two one. Is low. Three and one. Griffey on deck has the only hit of Clary a double. High pop. That should be an out. Blouser in foul territory. Got it. And the inning's over. Good pitching by Marty Clary. We've completed six. There's no score. We're going to inning number seven. Just a reminder, when the Braves get back from this trip, the Pirates are in town for a weekend. And Friday, August 18th, is Coca-Cola, Starvin' Marvin, Speedway, Squeeze Bottle Night. So be there. Pick up your squeeze bottle. And then on Saturday, August 19th, didn't think it was this close, but it's back to school promotion. First 10,000 kids, 14 and under, with a reserve seat ticket. Get a free back-to-school luncheon box Compliments of crap.
As you see a Braves banner hanging from the facade. Russell and Clary are the first two. I want to give you the phone number two of the fantasy camp. If you're interested in that Braves fantasy camp, we certainly hope that you are. The number is 1-800-8-THEN-BRAVES. And you must be 30 or over to attend the fantasy camp. They got a lefty going. Looks like Charlton might be in their bullpen. Russell is two for two. It's over third, but it's hooking foul. 0 and 1. Arm Charlton, not only a good pitcher, but he won the milking contest last night. <laughs> Got good hands. <laughs> oh, it was. Tom Browning was second. Here's a foul back into Cincinnati's broadcast booth. Joe Knoxall and Marty Brenneman. Come That's on, Joe. Second one in two days they've gotten up there. <laughs> There it goes that. Joe and Marty. Oh, he missed it. Have to give the old left-hander an error. Little pop foul off to the right. The old left-hander rounding third, heading home. That's Joe Nuxall. We've been doing their game for over 20 years. No balls, two strikes. Joe pitched in the major leagues. I think he was 14 during the war years. 14 or 15. Here's a pitch. Low. One and two. We are scoreless in the seventh. Rob Dibble has now gotten up along with Charlton. Rats. I thought he might take the day off. Russell is out of there on the split finger. A strikeout for Leary. Here's Cleary. That's four strikeouts now by Leary. His record six and one lifetime against Atlanta. Cleary is 0 for 1. And the fastball misses. Boy, last year this Leary won 17 ball games for the Dodgers when they won it all. And this year they trade him. He was under 500. Blowing away. I don't think you ever have too much pitching. You can win pennants with pitching and defense. I guess they felt that with Ramon Martinez and John Wetland both pitching as well as they were. And they could afford to trade a pitcher to try to get a little offensive yeah. help. That's why they got Daniels. There's a bouncer up the middle. Tough play, Oster. And he won't throw him out. It'll be a base hit for Marty Cleary. You talk about a Baltimore chopper. Boom, boom. Was bouncing around over the pitcher's head out by a second. And Cleary, who runs pretty well for a pitcher, beat it out easily. And he hits pretty well for a pitcher, too. He's now four for 16. That's a 250 batting average. Seems to find a way to get on base at least once every game he pitches. Another thing those pitchers have done this year, they have a lot of sacrifice bunts. I think today was the 18th. Here's Odebe. McDowell's due. He has walked a couple of times today. He's 0 for 1. He's had one hit in the series. It was a bunt single. He has missed a home run first time up by inches, and he bounces this to second. Oster will get the force. That's all. We can't double McDowell on that high hopper. But they do get the force on Clary to put McDowell at first where he might run at any time. Jeff Treadway is next. Jeff came into this game hitting 325 for the season against the Reds. I pointed that out to him after the game last night. And he said, well, I'm not going to make a big deal out of it, but it sure does feel good. <laughs> I've gone right at that. Hope that George Metaxas is looking in in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Watches the Braves on TV. Runner going, a liner over first. It is fair in the corner. Odebees to third. They're waving him. The ball gets away. A run will score. Treadway's at third. They're going to let him come. Here's the throw. Jeff Treadway hit 
Big one in the corner in right field. It bounced away from Winningham. That'll be an inside the park home run. I would think. That's one of the most exciting plays in baseball. Look at the glad hand for Jeff Treadway in the Braves dugout. That ball got down in the corner and took some kind of a bad carom right there. And just kept rolling along the track. And that's a rubberized track here, so Winningham had a long way to go to come up with it. And Treadway never stopped. Inside, Inside the, the park. park. Sixth homer of the year, RBIs number 23 and 24. Two to nothing, Atlanta. Here's Lonnie Smith. They're appealing to play at second. Harry Wendelsat says that Treadway touched it. Well, they might have been talking about McDowell. Didn't make any difference. Whoever they appealed to, he had touched the bag. And the pitch to Smith is driven in a left center field and for a base hit. Over quickly is Griffey. Lonnie Smith is not going to stop. He is going to make it. That'll be a hustling double for Lonnie Smith. That gives Lonnie a 10-game hitting streak. That's the longest hitting streak by any member of the Braves this year. Deion James earlier in the year had a nine-game streak. Scott Braden is out. That's the 24th double of the year for Lonnie Smith. Looks like Dibble. Larry is being lifted. Dibble coming on. Let's go ask you, Pete. When's the last time you saw a runner break from first on a hit and run? He was stealing. Probably wasn't a hit and run. He was breaking. And the guy hit a home run. Yeah, inside the park. <laughs> yes, sir. All right, here's Ron Dibble on in relief. He'll be the second pitcher used by Pete Rose. Now let's go back and take another look at the inside the park home run. Ola B. McDowell with two outs was running on the pitch. And Treadway laces it down the line. It's going to hit right in that crease down in the right field corner. And just as Winningham gets there, it caroms and starts rolling down the warning track out toward right center field. By the time Winningham runs it down, Treadway is on his way to third, and they never stopped him. Roy Matika gave him the green light. The relay throw home by Ron Oster was late. Inside the park home run, 2 nothing Atlanta. Treadway with his fourth hit and his fourth RBI in this series. And then Lonnie Smith hustled a single into a double, and Murphy's at the plate. Smith now has batted safely in 10 straight. Murphy looking for his first hit of the day, and he's got to face Dibble. Third in the National League in games pitched. 97 strikeouts in 66 and two-thirds innings and a little chin music for Dale Murphy. He is 6-3, and three, ERA 2.43, one save. Their leader in saves, of course, is John Franco with 25. Fouled away. One ball, one strike. This guy not only throws well over 90 miles an hour, but he's got a dandy breaking ball. He gets a lot of strikeouts with a curve or a slider. He has a motion similar to the to Bob Feller in his prime. It's a little different. Everything, arms, legs, and here it comes. Two balls and one strike. You notice he throws his arms up into the air very quickly as he comes to the plate. Anything to distract the batter doesn't hurt. Look out. Three and one. Braves lead it two to nothing. They picked up eight hits now. And a 3-1 to Murphy. Hit high into the air off third. Let's see if it stays in for Quinones. It's going to if he can catch up to it, and he does. Four out number three. Murphy fouls to the third baseman to Brave. Pick up two big ones on an inside the park home run by Jeff Treadway. We go to the bottom of the seventh. He's off the bottom half. 
top of the seventh at 38,000 plus. Get on their feet now. Settle back. Benzinger's on deck. First pitch is high. To encourage the Reds fans, on the Matrix, it says the Reds have come from behind in 24 of their 51 wins. The Braves can vouch for that. They just go back to Friday. That inside the park home run by Treadway, the first by a Brave since Paul Runge did it back in 1985 in Philadelphia. Two balls, no strikes. Some good coaching by Roy Matika on that particular play. He had to tell Treadway whether to go or not. He's done a good job coaching third. I think that only three runners have been thrown out at the plate all year long. Great stat. Two balls, one strike. Hit hard and foul. And that young man stuck out the glove and couldn't come up with it. I hope he didn't come up with a broken finger. Did he? Yes. Hurt his hand. He had a glove on. He just couldn't handle it. Two balls, two strikes. And a pitch. There's a let up low. Three balls, two strikes. Clary's pitch. Way out of the strike zone. That brings the tying run of the play. Griffey walked. He had doubled last time, but he only hit. Oh, Cleary, that's going to get the Braves bullpen active. Benzinger is flying to left and struck out. Bruce Dow Canton has done a good job with these young pitchers out to talk to him. He's like a father to him, really. Well, he's had a lot of these pitchers when yeah. they're in the minor leagues, so he's known them on their way up to the major leagues as well as after they got here. Pete, you know, and all the coaches uh, know most of these kids playing and uh, have had them in spring training and and had them in the minors. Ernie, I know you're going to be taking a few days off for the rest of the road trip. You're going to miss a big ceremony tomorrow. You, you've talked a lot about how superstitious some pitchers are. Okay. John Smoltz has not won a game since the All-Star break. Tomorrow he's going to have a ceremony in Los Angeles. He's got all the box scores of the games he's pitched since the All-Star break, and he's going to burn them. <laughs> Try to change his luck. And because his name is Marmaduke, he's going to throw a couple of dog biscuits for fuel for the fire. Now That's tell me, tell me that he's not superstitious. Oh, he is one of the most superstitious players that I've met. He was wearing the four-leaf clover in his shoe, and it helped several times. He broke a cut, broke some losing streaks. But I guess that's something in the past now. He eats the same thing for breakfast when things are going well. As they pitch low. Yes, Don Sutton will be joining the Braves broadcast crew in Los Angeles. There's John Smoltz. Trying, trying to to raise a, some sort of a beard or a goatee. He's, Trying very hard. He's losing to Pete Smith, though, in the competition. Yes. There's a bouncer foul. But he's invited the media to the ceremony tomorrow. <laughs> he's really <laughs> making a big deal of it. <laughs> I'd say California's the appropriate place to have to yes. hold that, too. <laughs> <laughs> you never know who's going to show up to that, baby. <laughs> One ball, two strikes. Austin Walker and Eichhorn throwing in the bullpen. And there's a bouncer foul. Benzinger applied to left and struck out. Winningham on deck. We're in the bottom of the sun. There is nobody out. Benzinger knocked in two big runs on Friday. It tied the game. And he sat one foul right off his foot. He grand slammed against the Braves. Last visit in. Hit a good series in Atlanta. Hit that grand slam off Marty Clary. That was Clary's first outing in relief after coming up from Richmond. One ball, two strike. The 
Braves. And Griffey at first are trying to win. The Braves trying to win their 45th game. And win this series would be a great way to start a road trip that has 13 games. There's a bouncing ball foul. It'll stay one and two. Braves really don't have many games left in August at home. Just Pittsburgh and St. Louis. That's six games. And a lot of games left in September. One ball, two strikes. Bouncing ball first. Evans goes to short. One there, back to first. He got him at first. Double play. Clary got over to take the toss. Well executed by Evans, Thomas, and Marty Clary. They call this the toughest double play of all to turn because that pitcher is hustling over to first base, and the shortstop on the return throw has to hit the moving target. Well done. Clary got over there in plenty of time. He was even able to stretch a little bit to take the return throw. What a big double play. Two outs. Nobody on for winning him. And the pitch is low inside. Clary's hat now on a little crooked, which is one of his trademarks. He tugs at it. He almost looks like a lefty out there. The one off. Lefties are excused for wearing their hats crooked. Two balls, no strikes. There's Charlton going back to their bullpen. That is a knee-high fastball over. Two and one. Well hit. Nice play. Treadway on the first. And the inning's over. We have sailed through seven. It's two to nothing, Atlanta. Let's take a look at the other scores as we move to the eighth here. Three three in the ninth. Cubs and the Pirates. Philadelphia one to nothing over the Cardinals in the seventh. And there's no score at New York. No score at Los Angeles or San Francisco. They're just underway. Red Sox and Cleveland got one going 4 4 Boston tied that one up Texas beating Baltimore 2 to 1 in the eighth and Toronto got five in the seventh in that game with the Yankees Kansas City Minnesota 2 2 seven and in a big one Chicago 3 2 over the Tigers in the fifth and no score at Milwaukee and later Oakland at Seattle. Here it's two to nothing, Atlanta. We go to the eighth inning. Here's Pete. Hey, thank you, Ernie. Daryl Evans will lead off here in the eighth. Evans, two more hits in the game today. A pair of singles. He's also grounded out. I'm trying to get that batting average over the 200 mark. He's got it up to 193 now. He'll be followed by Andres Thomas, then Jeff Blauser. Ball for a strike 0 and 1. Rob Dibble on in relief of Tim Leary. Missed upstairs. One ball, one strike. Very seldom do you see a relief pitcher go through a year and record 100 strikeouts. Dibble's going to do that. He's got 97 strikeouts. High in the air, left side. Quinones, the only guy over there. And there's out number one in the eighth. Pete Dibble is an example of, of a pitcher, relief pitcher, who when there's no one on base, he's not going to work from the stretch. He's going to wind up. It's got to be more deceptive with this big windup that he has. And I would think with any pitcher than just taking a stretch and pitching to the batter. You ask a batter, and he'd rather have you pitch from the stretch. Watch the way he wheels in and kicks that leg high. 
That's got to be a little deceptive to the hitter. And he just showed you his good breaking ball. He's ahead in the count 0 and 1. Andres Thomas 0 for 3 in this game. Hitless in his last 12 at bats. His average is dipped to 227. Duncan to his left. Can't come up with it. And Andres Thomas will reach on an error by Mariano Duncan. So the Braves get a base runner with one down in the eighth. On this carpet, you got to come up with this ball, and right away the official scorer said error, short, and Duncan is charged with the boot. Watch this pitching motion. Watch how his hands up, big high leg kick, and wheels around. Here comes a glove and the arm, and he has got to be tough to hit. I don't care. Now Jeff Blauser is one for three. Ball won the count and Blouser. Paul Ossenmacher throwing in the Atlanta bullpen. He might be in there. That's usually the case when a pitcher throws while the team is hitting. Blouser pops this one foul, comes back out of play. One ball, one strike. It is a warm day here in Cincinnati. Marty Clary may have told Russ Nixon he felt he'd had it. The only thing that uh, if he unless it's because Clary is due up uh, fifth in the inning but uh, I don't think so I think uh, I think uh, awesome Marker's in there whether Clary comes up or not one and one the count on Blouser Cubs have taken a four three lead over the Pirates ninth inning. Andres Thomas chased back to first. One out here in the eighth inning. Braves about hit the Reds this afternoon. 8-1. That error by Duncan, the first error made by Cincinnati. And the count goes to 2-1 and one now on Jeff Blauser. John Russell, the on-deck hitter. How about those Cubs? They just picked up a run. They lead 4-3 in the ninth. That's a final now in Toronto. Blue Jays beat the Yankees 6-5. There's the breaking ball for a strike and the count even two and two. Now the two two to Blouser and he got him with a breaking ball. Dibble records his first strike out of this game his 98th strikeout of the year. The two men are out and John Russell will bat. Tommy Gregg moving to the on deck circle so they will pinch it for Clary if Russell can keep the inning going. Russell two for three in this game pair of singles and a strikeout. Either way Austin Mocker's in there because he's come to the dugout. Sharply hit but right at Quinones he'll take the short route down to second in time for the force and Andres Thomas. And that's all for Atlanta in the eighth. The error does not hurt. The Braves leave one runner. We go to the bottom half of inning eight. Still 2-0 Atlanta. We go to the bottom half of the eighth inning. And as we were saying in the top of the eighth, it looked like Paul Ossenmacher would be coming in to pitch. Indeed, he is. Taking over for Marty Clary, who did a splendid job this afternoon. Clary worked seven innings, allowed no runs, only one hit. Walked two and struck out two. Ossenmacher on for the 44th time this year. Jeff Reed, the scheduled hitter. But Pete Rose is going to his bench now. He's got Dave Collins and Joel Youngblood. Both out around the on deck circle. Collins will bat for Jeff Reed. Youngblood will hit for Oster. The Cincinnati Reds, considered at the beginning of the season to be one of the better hitting teams in the National League, surprisingly, have been shut out 13 times this year. Of course, they have had a lot of injuries, and a lot of their everyday players have missed a lot of games. But they have been shut out more times than any other team in the National League. Dave Collins pinch hits for Jeff Reed to lead off here in the bottom of the eighth. Collins hitting an even 200. He's 7 for 35. 
Almost all of his at bats, all but one, in fact, have come as a pinch hitter. Collins released by the Reds about six weeks ago, then re signed by them two weeks ago. Down the left field line, that's a fair ball headed toward the corner. Collins, who can run, heads for second. Lonnie Smith gets the ball back to Andres Thomas. It's a double for Dave Collins. His first extra base hit of the year. Only the second hit of the afternoon by the Reds. Now Joel Youngblood will bat for Ron Oster. Russ Nixon on his way to the mound. And we may get the change made right here. He's got Icorn out in the bullpen. And that will be the case. So Ossenmacher gets a quick hook here. He threw one pitch. It wound up in the left field corner, and Russ Nixon has seen enough. So Mark Icorn will come in now. To pitch to either Youngblood or a pinch hitter for him, Pete Rose can make a counter move. And while Icorn warms up, we'll take this time out. Pitcher number three of the afternoon for Russ Nixon is right-hander Mark Icorn, who is making his 29th appearance with Atlanta. There you see his numbers for the year. Joel Youngblood is going to stay in there as the pinch hitter. Youngblood batting 236, two homers, 12 RBIs. He's six out of 26 as a pinch hitter. Two nothing Atlanta. Nobody out with Dave Collins at second here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Ball one, the count on Youngblood. Got to make Youngblood hit the ball. You can't put him on. That would be the tying runs on and put the winning run at the plate, potentially. Scotty Madison has moved on deck to pinch hit for Dibble. That evens the count. One ball, one strike. There's Madison. Norm Charlton and John Franco, a pair of left-handers, up now in the Reds' bullpen. Youngblood is 17th on the all-time Major League list pinch hitters. 91 career pinch hits. There's Franco on the left side of your screen, and... Norm Charlton on the right side. Franco will get the call if the Reds turn the game around here. Charlton will most likely be in there if they don't. One ball, one strike. And Icorn and Russell having trouble getting together. Still indicator set of signs. They want to make sure that they have them right. They've got to confuse Collins at second base. He just can't simply hang out a one and throw a fastball and two throw a curve. Oh, he's going to flash something to the batter. The pickoff play on Treadway sneaking in behind Collins almost got him. That was close. They've gotten together on a pickoff. No, it was Clary and uh, Treadway got together on a pickoff just like that in an earlier game. There you look at it. Treadway getting in there, but Harry Wendelstadt calling the play and calling it right. He was just back. Now the 1-1 one -one to Youngblood did not get the breaking ball. And Icorn ahead in the count, 1-2. and two. Over at Shea Stadium, Montreal has taken a 1-0 lead over the Mets now. That game in the top half of the fourth inning. The 1-2 pitch. Missed outside, 2-2. Two and two.
The pickoff attempt by Icarn. And that little move he just showed him has cut down Collins' lead at second base. He's not getting out quite as far as he was. Now the 2 2. Full count now, 3 and 2 on Youngblood. Don't want to lose him. You see how far Collins' lead is. Initially, when he first got down to second base and Icorn came in, he had that. Well, just, just about both feet were out on the carpet. Bounce to the right side. That'll get the runner over to third, but it's a big out number one here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Youngblood grinding out 4-3. Collins moves to third. And with one out, Scotty Madison will now pinch hit for Dibble. Madison hitting 195, no homers, couple of RBIs, 0 for 2 as a pinch hitter. It was Madison who was at the plate here on Friday night in the ninth inning. The suicide squeeze was put on, and Madison unable to get the butt down. Runner got hung up, and Braves got out of the inning with the game tied, but then lost it in the tenth on Duncan's homer. Ball one to Madison. The infield is staying back. They'll let the run score from third on an infield grounder. 2 and 0 oh now to Madison. And Joe Baber heads down to the Atlanta bullpen. Braves don't want to let this one get away. They let one get away on Friday night, bounce back to win last night. Trying to make it two out of three to start the trip. Well hit to right, but Murphy's right there. He'll make the catch. Here's the tag. Here's Murphy's throw. Cut off by Evans. It's a two to one ball game. Madison driving his third run with a sack fly to right. Collins coming home from third. And the Braves' lead is now a one run lead. Charge the run to Paul Ossenmacher. Two outs in the inning now. Back to the top of the order, Mariano Duncan. It was fly to right, fly to left, and had a sacrifice bunt. count on Duncan. That just missed inside. 2-0. Oh. Tomorrow night we come to you from Los Angeles. It'll be Tom Glavin seeking his 10th win. Facing Ramon Martinez who is unbeaten in three starts. Three and nothing now to Duncan. Now the 3 0. Taken for a strike, three and one. Three one on the way. Caught the inside corner and the count full now. Three and two on Duncan. Icorn, who fell behind three and oh, trying to come back now and get the third out of the inning. On the Cincinnati shortstop. Here comes the payoff pitch to Duncan. He got him. Fastball struck him out. Good job of pitching by Mark Eichhorn. 
And that's all for Cincinnati in the bottom half of the eighth inning. They played a run. Collins doubles and scores on Madison sack fly. We've completed eight. It's now a 2-1 Atlanta lead. Changes for the Reds. Scotty Madison stays in the game at third. Luis Quinones moves from third to second. Joe Oliver is the new catcher batting seventh and the new pitcher batting in the number eight spot. Left-hander Norm Charlton making his 46th appearance of the year. He'll face Geronimo Barroa, who pinch hits for Icorn to lead off here in the ninth inning. Barroa batting 274, a couple of home runs, nine RBIs. And the count quickly 2-0 oh on Barroa. Charlton, a record of 4-1, no saves, 3.47 ERA. 2-1 now to Barroa. Dibble worked an inning in the third, allowed nothing, struck out one. Popped him up right side of the infield. Quinones drifting back into shallow right. He's got it. One down in the top of the ninth. Now it'll be McDowell who is 0 for 2. He's walked a couple of times. Two runs, eight hits for the Braves. One run, two hits for the Reds. We're in the ninth. Strike call to McDowell, 0 and 1. Charlton out of Rice University. Good fastball, good curveball. Little bouncer to the right side. Quinones gets a chance on this one. Throws out McDowell, two down. And now Jeff Treadway, who's inside the park home run back in the seventh inning, is the difference in this game. Game with a man on. He pops up the bunt. Oliver gets a little bit of a late break. Couldn't catch up with it 0-1. Treadway now with six home runs this year. Here's the one strike offering from Charlton. Broken bat roller out towards short. Mariano Duncan fields and throws and a very easy inning for Norm Charlton. The Braves go down one, two, three, and now Joe Baver will try to save it for Marty Clary as we go to the bottom of the ninth. 90-degree afternoon here at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati, and Joe Baver has come on to try to save it now for Marty Clary. Baver making his 48th appearance, 4-4, four four, 18 saves, 3.03 in run average. He had one stretch where he had converted 13 consecutive save opportunities, but in his last two save opportunities, Baver has not recorded the save. Quinones leads off the bottom of the ninth, a one-run Atlanta lead. Quinones 0 for 3. Icorn worked an inning. All zeros except for one strikeout. Quinones ground ball, base hit, right field. And the Reds have the tying runner on base with nobody out in the bottom of the ninth. One thing about being a relief pitcher, when you get in a good groove, it seems like it's a very easy thing to do just to come in and shut the door. But then you get those stretches where things don't go well. Then you start to think about it, too. And that doesn't help a bit. Here's Dave. Nobody out. Quinones at first. Eric Davis the batter. The base hit by Quinones. Only the third hit of the afternoon by the Reds. Ball one to Davis, who has bounced to the pitcher, fly to right, and fouled out to third. Two and zero the count. <laughs> the 
The 2-0 to Davis. Fly ball, deep right center field. Murphy goes back, looks up. Eric Davis has just hit a two-run homer. And Cincinnati, for the second time in three days, pulls off a dramatic victory against the Braves' beleaguered bullpen. series the Braves could have swept all three games instead they'll head for Los Angeles having lost two out of three we'll be back you know Ernie it's amazing Joe Baver had pitched in 46 ball games this year without giving up a home run Mariano Duncan hit the first home run off Baver all year on Friday night to win a game and Eric Davis has hit the second home run off Baver to win another one Reds in winning had three runs, four hits, and one error. The Braves two, eight, and one. Charlton the winner, five and one. Baber the loser, four and five.